I love this, this book. book. I've had both good and bad experiences coloring this Disney adult coloring book from Thomas Kincaid, and it leaves me conflicted every time. It's been the book that has pushed me to my limits and the book that has taught me the most about color and lighting. And every time I color a new page, I love it and I hate it. Today I'm coloring this page from The Lion King, partly because I still feel bad about choosing The Lion King as my testing page when I first bought this book. Pumpa, are you nuts? And I'm taking a completely different approach today in an attempt to avoid the mistakes I've made in this book in the past. The first being my repeated attempt to cover these black lines. But before we talk about these lines, let's take a step back for a moment to talk about these colors. Every time I've approached this book, my goal has been to replicate the colors of Thomas Kincaid's original paintings as closely as possible. This for me is the challenge that I love about this coloring book. I've finally redone my Prismacolor swatches so I can easily compare each color in my pencil range to the colors in the original art and choose the closest match. There won't be a perfect color for every part of this picture so I try to look at the biggest sections of color, the brightest highlights and the darkest shadows first. Then I focus on any significant color color changes like a section of blue among the purple sky or an orange edge among the rocks. I write down all the numbers that look like a close match and it doesn't have to be perfect, but it gives me a good starting point and makes the coloring process much easier than trying to pick out the right color out of 150 pencils as I'm coloring. When it comes to actually coloring, I keep my layers light and start blocking out the areas of color that feel the most obvious to me. And with practice, this process gets easier. Overlapping colors can create new colors and that's where a book like this becomes a great tool to practice color mixing and to develop your coloring skills. And I love this process, but I hate these lines. I've tried to remove these lines every time I've colored one of these pages in the past, but today I've decided just to embrace them. But these lines are not suited to adult coloring in my opinion. Many of these lines, especially in the sky, get in the way of proper coloring. Ideally, a page like this would have big areas that allow for a colorist to create their own light and shading, rather than creating these restrictions. These lines look great and give context when the picture has no color, when it's just a black and white illustration, but we don't need that context when we have the original art right beside the coloring page here. This is our context. I don't want cloud lines or lines for the light. I want to do these myself. And this is where I feel that some kids coloring books provide more opportunity to be creative and really transform a page into a piece of art because they often keep the details simple and don't include all this extra detail. I think this is a common mistake that adult coloring book publishers make. They assume that more intricate or busy pages make the pages more interesting to color. But unless you're adding details like Kirby Rosanas, often those details just get in the way or confuse the people trying to color. I know I've been guilty of this too in some of my older coloring books. So Disney, for your next coloring book, take your kids coloring books and just print them on much nicer paper. I think I've made my point. I should probably stop my little rant about how much I hate this book now because I love this book. I absolutely love the challenge of the lighting in some of these scenes. When I think of a rocky scene, my first thought would be to grab reds and browns. And yet, here I am with yellows in one area and blues and purples in another. It was the pictures in this Thomas Kincaid coloring book that first challenged me to stretch myself in trying something different with my lighting. In the past, I only ever did my shading with a darker or lighter version of the same color. But after coloring some of the scenes in this book and using this book as a reference image for some of the kids' Disney coloring pages I've colored on this channel, I found myself applying these more interesting lighting techniques more and more, bringing so much more depth to my other coloring pages and artwork. And that, for me, is what makes this book special. Even if you don't like the actual coloring pages or paper quality in this book, this is great for the color and lighting inspiration, especially if you're a Disney fan. Trying to replicate these pages is a challenge that is hard at first, but gets easier with every page. And I've been so impressed to see many of the members of my Facebook group trying this now too. This reminds 
reminds me so much of one of my other hobbies outside coloring jigsaw puzzles. And if you want to learn more about how colors can be perceived differently in different lighting, puzzles are a great way to train your eyes. A single puzzle piece can look completely different on its own without the context of the whole picture, just like this blue section doesn't look like a rock until we see it in the context of the rest of our image here. Unless, of course, you do stupidly ambitious puzzles like I do with no colors at all. But I would never think to color a rock without using a brown. And here I am with blues, yellows and even pinks. And each of these colors look out of context on their own, but together these are perfect for this image. And I'm excited to see how they come together. I am really happy with this progress so far and I am enjoying coloring this. But there is a dark truth behind this book that I just can't ignore. Because Thomas Kincaid, didn't paint most of the pictures in this book. Thomas Kincaid died in 2012 at just 54 years old. And since then, the Thomas Kincaid studio have continued to produce new artwork, including many of the Disney pieces that are included in collections like this. So I bought this book assuming that these were the Thomas Kincaid paintings, but in fact, many of these weren't painted by Kincaid at all. Tangled, Snow White, Aladdin, Mickey, and even Dumbo were painted after his death. That reminds me, I still haven't finished the Dumbo page. So which paintings did Thomas Kincaid paint? In his final years, he painted a series of 12 paintings that made up the Disney Dreams collection. I believe these were the inspiration for the rest and among these originals were The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast and The Lion King. So I feel better knowing this is a Thomas Kincaid page. I don't think this changes my view of this book. I still love the rest of this book, but it would be nice to have some kind of reference to know which ones are the original just for my own curiosity. With our background complete, it's time to move on to our animals. I've got my Prismacolor swatches out again to find the best color matches for each animal, although many of these colors are similar to the colors I've already used on the rocks and the background. And speaking of swatches, I know I've been talking about putting these on my website for months and I've been working on making them perfect and so I've been taking forever. And everyone keeps asking. So I've decided to make them available now, even though I would have liked to keep working on them. So I don't have all the brands and colors written out for you, but I do have a bunch of different blank options that you can use to create your own swatches, templates, and blending practice sheets, and it's all on my website at the link in the description. But back to our animals and our pink zebra. <laughs> I love this book. <laughs> There's not a lot of room for details here, and these areas are so small that I'm limited in my ability to create detailed highlights or shadows. Did I mention that I hate this book? Let's keep up the pink and give our bad guys some color. This is not the color scheme I would have expected to use here. They look like they've been through the washing machine with a pair of red socks. Trust the process. The page overall is looking great, but the details are definitely getting lost here. These characters are just too small to color with any kind of detail. Before I start on Pumbaa, I have something very cool to share. This is Pumbaa. Well, obviously, but this is an original drawing of Pumbaa that I've been sent by Tony Bancroft, who was the supervising animator and one of the creators of Pumbaa from The Lion King. This probably isn't as cool for you watching as it is for me holding this, but I'm nerding out a little bit here. I love original art like this, and this is going on my wall. Are you going to color it in? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I can't do that. Can I? Should I? Whoa, whoa, time out! Coloring our main characters should be the most exciting part of a coloring page. And when I'm coloring a children's page, they usually are. But today they are just so tiny. Timon here needs one basic pencil stroke and he's done. But with some patience and constantly sharpening my pencils, I'm determined not to give up on this. Oh, Shane, I can't 
can't believe I missed this opportunity. Here we go. This is much better. Scar, you don't get any pencils. You've been naughty. Can't believe I didn't think of this at the start of the video. I've had these on the shelf for weeks waiting for this video and I totally forgot about them until now. But just... We are down to our final characters now. And while these details are small, I'm determined to bring them to life as much as I can with these colored pencils. to finish this page off. I've decided to use my Caran d'Ache pencil blender to flatten out some of the extra surfaces and just give it a nice finish. This isn't something I always do, but it just gives it that slight final glossy finish that goes from looking like colored pencils to looking more like a print when you're using a waxy pencil like Prismacolor. And some paint pen highlights. I wasn't planning on doing this today, but you know I can't help myself. This is my favorite step on any coloring page and it can really help to lift these little details that got lost in the line work. For those who've said it was an impossible goal to recreate a painting with colored pencils, I think we've come pretty close. And while there are aspects of this book that I hate, I always love the end result. And I love the challenge it brings that is so different to any other book that I own. I do think this is one worth adding to your collection, even if you just try a few pages every once in a while. I know for me, my skills have grown as a result of taking on a book like this. And my first time was far from perfect. In fact, I made a pretty big mess and didn't even finish the page. If you've never seen that video, go watch it now and remember that every failure is a chance to grow. Today's page is my result after not letting that failure keep me down. 